Well, thank you so much for allowing me to come and to be a part of this VBS. I'm super excited. It's like I walked in and everybody in here is Western already. <laughs> the guys behind me have cowboy boots on, and I'm kind of a city slicker. <laughs> but I am from the country, and so we're excited. We're going to have a great time. I don't know. My heart's been blessed already. Uh, singing that song, It Is Well With My Soul, and one day... My faith will be sight. Amen. I don't know about you, but we're living in troubled times right now. Right. But someone, hel someone helped me by saying something. It was if your faith can be bigger than your doubt. I don't know how many of y'all doubt God. We don't want a hand raising right now. Okay? <laughs> but there have been times when I've doubted God. As long as my faith is bigger than my Amen. doubt... You know, maybe you can walk on some water. Amen. I don't know. I'll tell you what, Peter did it for a little bit. It's more than I've ever done. I'll tell you. But I'm excited to be, I'm looking for somebody with some hot air. Now, if you know somebody with hot air, raise your hand. Now, oh yeah, hey, all the, all the fellas are like, my wife, my wife. Just kidding. All right. No, he didn't do that, ma'am. He didn't, I promise. But I'm looking for somebody with some hot air. I got any volunteers? Now, listen, this is what happens. If you don't volunteer, you get volunteered. Right? right? Amen? Somebody with me? With Amen. All right. So, Brother Bill. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. Look, he looks so sophisticated and everything. All right? We have these uh, things. This is just a little wimpy balloon. It's not, there's nothing to it. I mean, look how little it is. It's like a noodle. I could eat that, all right? Now, do you want to give that a whirl? Yeah, you, oh, you sound confident. Yeah, because I, th I think he could do it. I know he could. I'm looking for somebody who's going to struggle a little bit. Um, our, uh, uh, hey, Brother uh, Tony, is that right? Did I get that right? Bro Lee, Lee, Lee. I'm sorry, it was Lee and Tony. Lee and Tony. I got them mixed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lee, could you come out here and help me, brother? Give him a hand. Now, I'll tell you what, just to make this fair, we're going to make it the same color, okay? Just so you know, I'm not. That, that has come out of a fresh pocket, too, of lint. So you're good. It, yeah, truly sanitized, all right? So all you're going to do, pull it, give it a little stretch like so. I'm going to try to teach him how to do this, all right? And you just grab this and just put a little air into it. Okay, so go ahead, give it a give it a whirl. Now I need you to try, okay, because you're a volunteer, you know. Okay, here I'm gonna try before you blow a gland or something. This is what we're gonna do. Grab it and pull. Oh, good night. That one went crazy. Okay. Hey, give him a hand. Good job. Now, now, I'm not done with you yet. Because you can't do that, I've got to do one for you. Okay, here, here you go. You can have that one, all right? Okay, we're going to make something together, all right? We can do that. All right, the first one, all right, is called a control bubble. So you're going to take this and you're going to go about an inch down and give it a little whirl like that, okay? Yeah, a, an inch, sir, not three. Okay, there you go. An inch like that, okay? There you go. All right, good job. Hey, give him a hand. All right, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do four of those. Simple, okay? Two, three, and four, just like that. Kind of make them, you know, semi-similar, you know. No. Now, the first one is called a what class? Control bubble. So you got to do what? Control it. Very good. Hey. Okay. So yeah, just one at a time. It don't let you do it. The poor guy. Now listen, how many of y'all want to try? You got kids in here that want to try? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Back row, young lady, come on down. Hey, everybody give him a hand. I mean, just give him a hand. Hey, 
Look, hey, he's, he's almost got it. Here, I'm going to do one for you, okay? Let's see here. I've got another balloon here. You want to try blowing it up? No? You don't want to try blowing it? Okay, well, you hold this, okay? Very... Okay, here we go. All right, let's try this. Okay. Now, here you go. You get this one, okay? All right, ready? Now, ready? Okay, one bubble. That's a control bubble. Good. Now, we're going to do it again. Two, three, and four. He's done this before. Good job. Hold it right there. Very good. Is that three? Good. One more. Pinch it and twist. There you go. Oh, you had it. Okay, very good. Now, we're going to take those four, all right, and we're going to put them over like this and then just give it a little ringing right there, okay? And you now have a dog face, okay? And then we're going to show everybody your dog face, okay? Oh, oh, yeah, here. Let me, let me help here. Okay, look, one, these two go together, all right? Very good. See, there's your dog face. All right, very good. You show everybody that. Now, we're going to do these guys. I'm going to hire these guys, all right? And then you put another bubble right there. She's going to make a giraffe. All right, just one bubble. Okay, very good. Now, we're going to do four more, three more, okay? Just like before. One, two, and three. It's not supposed to take this long, preacher. Sorry. Yeah, we got all night, right? Exactly. But we got to preach, too. Don't worry about that. I mean, Texas, things go long. Everybody's like, oh, you took the air right out of the room. <laughs> okay. And this is what you should You guys are doing a great job. Great job. You know what? I've never even had anybody go this far. So this is amazing. All right. Very good. All right. Hey, great. Yes, sir. That's going to be um, what kind of dog has a big head with tiny feet? Is that like a basset hound or something? A Dotson. Exactly. <laughs> He's going to lean to the left. Yeah, that's all right. Now, listen. OK, you're doing good. You keep working at that. Hey, look at you. You're almost there. OK, um, you did it. I like that. You did it. Bam right there, and then you give it a twist like that. Hey, th this one, now go all the way down here because we want this to be a weenie dog. That's going to be way down there. All right, here we go. Now we're going to give it one last pinch, and we're going to do four more bubbles, and we're going to be done. Two, three. Oh, no, you got it. You got it. Remember, it has little feet. It's got little feet. It does. It's got little feet. Now, listen, this is like a little French poodle, okay? Now, what's your name, young lady? Aria, um, did you brush your teeth tonight? No, did, wait, did you brush your teeth this morning? Okay, praise the Lord. Well, this thing doesn't lie. And if you blow on it, it's like a birthday candle. If you brushed your teeth, it doesn't light up. But if you didn't, it lights up. All right, are you ready? Blow it right over here. Oh, good night. You did. I'm just kidding, okay? She brushed her teeth this morning, okay? Why don't you give her a hand? She did a great job. Here, I tell you what. You did a great job right here. And here, you hold that one. All right? And see, we can even finish it off. This is a weenie dog with a little... There we go. There we go. You can take that one home too, okay? Very good. Uh, yeah, you can do that anytime you want. Just give it a little squeeze. Just poof. It's really easy. Why don't you guys give them a great hand? They did a great job. Go ahead. You can go sit down. All right. Very good. Let's see here. I have in my pocket. Oh, I wanted to show this for the, the little boys in here and the older men in here and the middle-aged men. Because in Texas, we do like guns in Texas. And I'm going to make something that, you know what that was called? That's a balloon burp. That's funny. <laughs> so we're going to take this little control bubble and we're going to push it inside of here. Okay? 
Now, don't worry, these things only pop every once in a while, and they only pop when they're real loud. So do I have a young man who could come up here and get this? This is going to be... Hey, um, let's see here. All right, uh, what, uh, yeah, come on down. I enjoyed that guitar playing. Give him a hand. Uh, what, uh, what, what's your name again? Caillou. Caillou. Wow, I'm going to have a tough name. <laughs> names. All right. Now, Caillou, I'm going to give you one instruction. Okay, you think you can do it? Hopefully. All right, now listen. This right here is called the impoppable ball. All right, it's really cool. It's a lot of layers. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold that, okay? And then... Uh, I mean, I, one job, man. One job, and this is what I get. That's the gun part. This is the bullet. Okay? I mean, okay. You make my life difficult. Caillou? Yes. Caillou. How do you spell it? Okay, no, it's T H A T. How do you spell that? <laughs> Supposed to be pretty sharp. Here's the gun, and here's the bullet. You stick it inside, and yeah, you would like to have that, huh? That's what I'm talking about, all right? No playing with it during service, all right? You got to get your Bible out, all right? Yeah, and, and don't shoot the preacher. Very good. Now, I, want, I know you're wondering what's underneath there, aren't you? You want to see what's underneath there. I told Pastor Grandy... His name is, is Grandy, correct? Because I kept call, I called him Grande on the phone. Grande. I'm like, no, why, is, like, why am I doing that? It's Grandy, long E. All right? So I'm going to tell you what's underneath this. This right here is a special pot that I found. All right? And I do need some volunteers. And uh, all right, let's have that young man in the back. That young lady, come on down. All right. And uh, I told Pastor Grandy that there's a leak in his roof. And it's right here. And I literally put a pot. Here, you guys can stand right down there, okay? All right, very good. Yeah, why don't you grab a cup? All right, and you grab a cup. All right, and place it on your head, okay? No, 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 not like that. I, you want the water to go inside, okay? Because if there is really a leak on the roof, okay, turn around and face the crowd. Right, no, you can hold it, buddy. All right, very good. Now, what I have under here is a, uh, a special uh, pot. And uh, what's your name, young man? What's your name? Uh, what is it? Bowden. Bowden. Okay, Bowden, listen, I'm going to help you out because I don't want water everywhere. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to empty this pot of all the water in it. Now, you can just hold it in front of you. You can drink that. That's fresh, recycled water. You see, it's cold. It's tasty. Now, what's your name, young lady, again? Hagen. Hagen, do you believe that there's any water left in here? You don't? Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You face the crowd, okay? And if there's any water in here, it'll come out on your head, okay? Because you don't believe there's water in here, right? Right? Now, listen, this is the principle, church. You know what God does? He gives us blessings. And there's so many blessings, we can't even contain them. But we fail to see them. That song said, we fail to give him thanks. Absolutely. There's not a day that goes by. Now, listen, Tegan, I'm not going to do this to you. Here's what I'm going to do, because you would have got water on your head. Now, for all the non-believers out there that believe that the blessings of God are done and they're all dried up, I know what Brother Bill's thinking. There can't be any more water. You know there can't be any more. Is that what you're thinking? No, there's more in there. Absolutely, because there's always more. Isn't that good cold water? Hey, but it's been filtered through the ceiling tile, through the roof, through the insulation. But don't worry, it's good. Would you like to see if there's some more in here? Absolutely, there's more. 
You can have more too. You know what? You know what's great? This young man asked for more. You know what? When the Bible says, ask and it shall be given you, right? You know what we fail to do? We fail to ask. You know what God does? He's like, okay, come here, young man. He doesn't, he doesn't say you haven't asked enough. You know what he does? He keeps filling and keeps pouring until there's so much we can't even take it. Look at Malachi when he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour, pour you out a blessing where you can't even. It's 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 pressed down. It's shaken down. It's running over. Now, if I had this on your head, eventually, you know what's going to happen? It's going to run over. Because why don't you give these young people a hand? Good job. That's. Thank you, Tegan. You can go sit down. All right. We're going to get to some pre. Oh, you know what? I want to show you one more thing. Let's see here. I've got tricks everywhere. Tricks up my sleeve. And uh, this is just simple hand magic. Okay. This is illusions. Okay. This is a little red ball here that if, if you watch it, you say, oh, man, I know exactly where that goes. Okay, you know why I can do that? Because the hand is quicker than the eye. Okay, you saw that. It looked like it went there, didn't it? Didn't it? Come on, all y'all are like, ooh, that was cool. <laughs> Wasn't it? See, I know this young lady on the front row. She was like, oh, I guarantee I can see. See, so how did you do that, right? This is the one that you got to watch, though. I'm going to stick it. I'm going to put it in my pocket right here. Okay, and then I'm just going to rub it right through. You see that? Only one person got it. Can I say? It's a tough crowd. I'm telling you what. I'm glad you're here tonight. Now, listen, we're going to be brief tonight, but in my short time of ministry, I've seen a lot of people come and go. This church is not very old. Is three years old, correct? And if I come back here, if I ever get invited back, <laughs> you never know, five or ten years from now, I want to see the same smiling faces and the same serious faces that I see tonight. But do you know what's not happening in our churches nowadays? It's something called longevity. Is something called faithfulness. When you sit, when you have somebody that sits up here and has been in faithful ministry for 40 and 50 years, for 30 years, that's saying something. You know why? Because the Bible says it's hard to find a faithful man. But in Proverbs chapter number 14 and verse number 12, the Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, I can't tell you the importance of this message in a new church, old church, middle-aged church. It doesn't really matter. But here's what I can tell you. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way which seems right to a woman as well, to a family as well, to a church member as well. I can't tell you how many times somebody comes and says, uh, again, you know, uh, I'm an assistant pastor in the church. And they say, listen, Pastor Jeremy, I want some advice. Can you give me some counsel? I'm like, me? Why would you pick me? Why don't you go pick somebody else? But I'll sit down with them and I'll say, listen, here's what the Bible says. And do you know what inevitably happens? Their mind was already made up. And they go a different direction. And there is a way which seems right in your mind to chase after that money, to chase after that career, to chase after something new, something shiny that the devil always produces. And do you know what happens? The end thereof are the ways of death. I can't tell you how many times a family is there and one decision leads to another. And the next thing you know, their smiling face is not in the seat. And that smiling face has become a bitter person because there was a way which seemed right. Now, we're going to look at a man tonight, Numbers chapter number 22. Numbers chapter 22. 
And I'm sure you've heard the story, one of my favorite stories in all the Bible, is the story of Balaam. Numbers chapter 22, and we're going to read verses 21 through 33 quickly. The Bible says, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. Hold up. Wait a minute. Don't skip over this. Moab was the enemy of God. The Moabites were the enemy. The Amorites were the enemy. Pretty much anybody that ended in ites other than the Israelites were the enemy. And so here was a prophet of God, if we could, a prophet of God, a preacher. This was the guy that was supposed to get a word from God and say, people, listen up. It's what God told me. You better listen. If you don't listen, you're going to die. That's kind of important. So everybody would say, even the kids, I don't want to die. I'm going to hear what the preacher says. Everybody would gather around. Son, shh, stop messing around. The preacher's speaking. Tonight, we're going to hear a word from God. Because Balaam was supposed to be the guy that said, if somebody was blessed, they would be blessed. Somebody that was cursed, they would be cursed. That's an important job. Now, here's this preacher, and this is where he finds himself. I'm not preaching to the preachers, but I'm preaching to all of us in here tonight because we all could find ourselves here. You know, we look at the man of God like, man, he could never do that. That's wicked. I can't believe that happened. But yet here was Balaam, the man of God, and he was with the princes of the enemy. And verse 22, and God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall, crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. He smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right nor to the right hand nor to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? You ever wonder what that sounded like? A donkey talking? I, I, I don't know what it sounded like, but my mind goes there. Does it? Did it sound like... No, that was a goat, right? It could have sounded like anything because it was God speaking. Amen. What have I done to thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, am I not thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me. Surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. Let's look at the context of the story real quick. The children of Israel were just defeating and destroying all of God's enemies. As the people of God, you will have enemies. But there's nothing like the Lord fighting for you. Amen. I'm telling you, you can take on any battle, anything, if the Lord is fighting for you. But you got to have God on your side. When God fights for you, you win, no question about it. Amen. Most people are trying to work out or fix and fight their own battles. I want the Lord fighting for me. Moabites, Amorites were the enemies of Israel and the enemies of God's chosen people. The book of Deuteronomy tells us Israel not to contend with Moab. God says, I'll give you that land. When God says something, he does it. 
Part of our problem is, church, that we've made our enemies our friends. The flesh is not your friend. Contrary to popular belief, the flesh is not your friend. We have three enemies. That's the world, the flesh, and the devil. What we've done is we've made the world churchy and the church worldly. And so when people walk in here, they can't see a difference between somebody who is a Christian and somebody who is not a Christian. When my wife walks in the store, everybody says, she's a Christian. You can tell. There's something different about her, her dress, her speech, everything about it. There's something different about a Christian. We've let Satan get an advantage of us. We've given him a place. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil. You see, light and darkness are on two different ends of the spectrum. The Bible says in Corinthians, what concord hath Christ with Belial? What communion hath light with darkness? They're not even close. They're not even similar. So we shouldn't talk like the world. We shouldn't act like the world. The world should not be on our agenda. Now, here's the king of Moab in Numbers chapter 22. He thinks up a plan to curse the people of God. The enemy always wants to take out the people of God. I don't need to remind you that the people of God are under attack today. The enemy wants to curse the people of God. That's in Numbers 22, verse 2 through 5. Let's read it so we get the context. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. The first character in the story is Balaam. He's a prophet of God. He was known as getting a word from the Lord. He was God's man for God's people. Here we find ourselves in the story, God's Balaam, God's prophet, was on his way to a place where he shouldn't have been going. On his donkey. He was going to see someone he probably shouldn't see. He was probably going to do something he shouldn't do. How many of us have been there? We were going somewhere we shouldn't have went. We already knew the answer. We knew what the Word of God said. We knew what the man of God said, and we still did it to be a friend to someone he shouldn't be friends with let's take a quick look at this donkey he was a faithful donkey the donkey sees the angel in verse number 23 balaam wants to kill the donkey the donkey saves his life he owes the donkey his life because he saved it god said if he'd have kept going and i had a sword he would have killed him God would have killed him. You know, the donkey represents a parent trying to help their child. It represents a spouse telling you something about yourself that you don't believe. And that's hard. And this is where it gets quiet. Because you know what happens? My wife comes to me and tells me something in the right spirit, in a virtuous manner. I'm the man of the house. You see, Balaam wants to kill the donkey. It represents a pastor who loves you and rebukes you and tells you like it is. He gets in your business. It's a friend who's man enough and godly enough to tell you about your bad relationship, your bad friendship, and the direction you're going in. You see, you can tell a lot about somebody by when they receive instruction and correction. How many times has pastor come to us? How many times has our parent come to us? How many times has a leader come to us and said, hey, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about the direction you're headed. Why are you worried about me? Why don't you worry about your own family? Why don't you worry about your own life? Instead of hugging their neck and saying, thank God for sending him our way. And that's where we ought to be. 
You see, there is a way which seems right. But Balaam said, if I had a sword, I can't tell you how many teenagers could be there, how many parents could be there. It, it never ceases to amaze me when a church first starts and they have young people. Pastor, bless my child. I want you to pray that he'll serve God and pray that he does right. And you bring those little babies down there and the pastor prays for them because you gave them to God. But yet when they become a teenager and the pastor says, hey, they're heading in the wrong direction. Can I help you? Well, who do you think you are? If I had a sword, man, I'd have killed you. And that pastor, that donkey, represents a pastor. It represents a youth pastor. It represents a parent trying to tell their kids to do what's right. How do we get to this place of hate for people who love us the most? A pastor who prayed for us, for your kids, visit you in the hospital, seeing the kids the first time I chance I get out of here. And, and Paul said, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Here's the pastor telling the truth, and yet he's become our enemy. How did, how did Balaam get here? Number one, unholy associations. Look in verse 7 and verse 8. The Bible says, And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. They came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. They spent the night. You see, the unholy associations were in his house. And if God did a check on our house tonight, what would be holy and what would be unholy? You see, those men spent the night. Why would they even spend the night? Balaam already knew the answer God was going to give him. He knew it was wrong. Moabites were the enemy, and the enemy was sleeping inside his house. You know what we've done? We made the flesh our friend. We made that television our friend. And you know, we got to see that show. we got to see that exact thing. And even before listening to what people say, we should cut them off because of who they are. If they are the enemy of God, we should not even be talking. The Bible says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You are declaring that you are not a Christian if that happens. You love the world, you desire to be with the world, and you want to be a part of the world. The scripture is pretty clear. This was bad from the start. How do people just get mad at the church and how do they get mad at God? How kids get mad at their parents. When I started this message, I said, there is a way which seems right. There is a way which seems right. You know what we ought to do? We ought to bathe everything in prayer and say, you know what? I'm going to run it by my leaders. I'm going to run it by my authority. Do you know what authority God put in your life? Number one is the word of God. <laughs> Instead of letting this book examine us, we examine the book and we say, Eh, I like that, and I don't like that. I like that, and I don't like that. Here's our authority. Now, what does the authority say you're doing in your home, in your house, with the associations that you have? You know, Facebook has killed a ton of Christians. Unholy associations. I'm not, I don't have any problem with Facebook. You know what the problem is, though, is we say, you know what? That's right. Got that person to think in that way. And pretty soon, that person's smiling face, not in the church anymore. Because they influenced you with an association. This is what happened with Balaam. You see, it was bad friendship with good gifts. <laughs> I mean, rewards of divination. That's saying something. Hey. You tell me, how much did you, a hundred grand? Man, you could spend the night. I'll give it all to God. It sounds good, doesn't it? 
And that's where Balaam was. Okay, you give me that? You can spend the night and I'll go ask God one more time. Do you think that Balaam knew the answer? <laughs> How many times this fellow was talking about it in prayer? We know the answer. And we ask God for it again. And God gives them a king. King Saul. <laughs> and you know what happens? Another here was Balaam asking God one more time, and God had told him, don't, don't, don't play with the enemy. You see, our authority is the word of God. Amen. Where does it stand in your life? Number two, the authority that we have, it should be the man of God. The man of God should be the authority, according to Scripture. You say, well, God did give you authority in your house as the leader of your house. Yes, he did. But that's your house. This is God's house and this is God's man. And so either I come here and I say, I'm going to place myself under the authority of God's man. Do you know what happens, church, when you do that? You receive the blessing of God and not the curse of God. Balaam received the curse of God because he got out from under the authority of God Almighty. But yet, if I had a sword, I'd kill you. To the man who loves you and prays for you. We have let other things become our authority, church. Everything else but scripture. Humanism has crept into our churches. And now that's the authority. You know what we've done? We've let somebody else, because somebody in our family became a sodomite, a queer, and we said, you know what? I'm not drawing the line. You know what Balaam? Balaam didn't draw a line. That's the sad part. And you know what we have in our churches now? We've got corruption. Because nobody drew a line. God has absolutes in his scripture. Amen. They're black and white. Amen. There's no gray. Doesn't mean I can't love them. But I got to preach against the sin because God said that it's against him. No matter how many of them I got in my family. No matter how good wrong looks, it's still wrong. Doesn't matter if it's a girlfriend, boyfriend, money. The devil's a master at making sin look good. Number two, unholy choices. Not only unholy associations, but unholy choices. You make decisions based upon the word of God. Before Balaam could ask the question to God, God asked him a question in verse number 8 and 9. Look at that. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came to Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? Now, do you think God knew what type of men those were in that house? Absolutely. Absolutely. God knows it all. Unfortunately, God knows everything in our life. And fortunately, he tells us. What do you have in your life that God is asking the question of saying, what men, what money is that in your pocket that I told you to tithe? But Lord, I'm going to do something great with this. I'm going to do something right with this. You see, the problem is we really don't like preaching anymore because <laughs> it hurts too bad. And, and, and that's the unfortunate truth. You see, God speaks to us through his word. And that's how God spoke to him. The angel of the Lord was his adversary. There are people watching you. What about the two servants that were with Balaam who watched this? All because of some choices that Balaam made. I'm almost done, church. I just want to ask you tonight, is there some un unholy associations in your life? How about some unholy choices? You know what they lead to? An unhappy ending. You look at the end of Balaam's life, and it was a life of tragedy. You want to have a life that's fully blessed? You know what you do? You come down to an old-fashioned altar and say, God, keep me humble to your book. Keep me humble to your word. Keep, keep me humble to your man. And you know what happens? 
that umbrella of blessing will be upon your family and your life. But if you don't, and if you won't, you will have an unhappy ending. There is a way. There is a way. Let's pray. Father, I've done my best to preach your word. And Lord, I pray you take this simple little message. Balaam, we've all heard it so many times. Father, I pray you'd humble us as a nation. God, we're so full of ourselves, so full of pride. Father, I just pray that we would stop examining your word and let it examine us. Father, I pray that it shine a light down in our lives, Lord, to expose the sin, the fleshliness, and the pride that each one of us struggle with. God, I pray that you do a special work this week in BBS. Father, I pray you do a moving in a special way. Pray for these children. We pray for salvations. Lord, we pray for some to be called. Lord, thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name.